Color guard, attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Color guard, advance. Color guard, halt. Color guard, post the colors. Scouts for salute the flag. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for just stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color guard dismissed. Hello, we have another singer with us. Her name is Renaya Peebles. Give our youth another hand. The Boy Scout Troop 254, Nia Ingram, Asia, Pearl Hilliard, Simone Allen, and Brianna. Thank you all so very much for a job well done. Next, we will have the Interfaith Prayer for Wisdom and Leadership by Pastor Anthony Dixon of New Grant Chapel AME Church and Ahmad Muhammad Samir Wahid principal and founder of Islamic Institute of Atlanta. Followed by that will be a video presentation of the overview of the first 100 days and department highlights. Thank you.
to our mayor, elected public officials, and community leaders, family, and friends, let us pray. To the almighty God, creator and sustainer of all, God of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We are gathered here this evening because you told us in your word that if we call upon you, you will answer us. So we come boldly today asking for your guidance, direction, and peace in our city and local government. God, we ask that you pour out your infinite wisdom, power, and grace. Help us to honor you as we unify to serve you and our community. We ask that you anoint our efforts and kingdom work for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The peace, blessings, mercy of God be upon you. We start in the name of God, for he is the provider and the sustainer. We start by saying thank you on behalf of all those who have gathered here today. Thank you for many and many abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health. We need to fulfill our callings for sustenance and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thanks as well for the freedom to embrace you or the freedom to reject you. Thank you for loving us even so from your boundless and gracious nature. You have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular, for this assembled council. I'm asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of our time, a sense of the welfare and true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and rightness, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement, personal peace in their lives and joy in their tasks. We ask you to unite us to protect this city and to protect this blessed country. Amen. I'm Dina Holiday Ingram, your mayor. And over the first 100 days of this administration, there has been a buzz of success, development, and improvement for you, our residents. From fresh new sidewalks being poured and roads being repaved to the start of construction on the East Point Model Mile, the city of East Point has been moving forward. Let's take a moment to share more of the great things that have been happening in the Point.
as you can see, the first 100 days have been filled with efforts to improve our great city. And every day, our elected officials, city employees, and community partners continue to work hard together to move our great city forward. And the construction of our new City Hall Government Center is an indication that East Point is truly a city that's on the move. And because of you, there's no point like East Point. of our speaker by none other than our previous mayor, Patsy Jo Hilliard. Good evening. You know, it's an absolute honor to be here with all of you this evening to listen as the Honorable Dina Holiday Ingram, the 34th Mayor of the City of East Point, presents her first State of the City speech for the City of East Point. And for the historians in the room, this also happens to be the 25th anniversary of the first State of the City address in the city of East Point. I happened to be present for that first address on that night 25 years ago. And it is a wonderful blessing for me to be here with Dina and with all of you one more time. Say something, 25 years, can you believe it? <laughs> Well, you know, East Point has come a long way. Wouldn't you agree? In 1980, when my family relocated to the metropolitan Atlanta area, we settled on East Point as a place where we wanted to make our home because we felt it possessed everything we were looking for at the time. Proximity to downtown Atlanta and to the airport, which was important to us because my late husband aces work and travel schedule. Clean, safe neighborhoods with neighborhood scale commercial uses nearby, offering a familiar environment to that which we had become accustomed in the previous places where we had lived. And because our youngest child was just entering high school at the time, we appreciated the quality of the schools that East Point had to offer. I guess I'd also have to confess that the lens through which we viewed East Point may have been partially clouded by the real estate agent who helped us find our home. He was a young, energetic, idealistic, upstart family man that convinced Asa and I that there really was no place or no better place to live than East Point. Many of you know this man as Mr. Joseph Hextall, <laughs> the first African American to be elected to the East Point City Council back in 1982. A fighter, a trailblazer, but to Ace and High, he has always been just Joe one of our closest friends and confidants, sometimes protector, and especially for me now, he's a brother. East Point wasn't perfect back in those early days when we arrived, but we quickly discovered that the energy that Joe displayed for, his, for us existed in the entire community, and it was palpable. People from every part of the city, from all walks of life, took great pride in our city and were always finding large and small ways to offer service to the community and to each other. Neighborhoods that had previously been segregated for decades were slowly repainting themselves into beautiful fabrics of diversity and inclusion. So when Joe was elected, it was more just a first, it was more than just a first for the African American community in our city. It was an explicit sign to all of us that East Point, our entire community of East Point, had made an affirmative decision to move deliberately in the direction of progress. Understanding to be an international city, to be a community of the future. 
And please forgive me for taking some advantage of the privilege given to me this evening to introduce our mayor, to share some of this backstory that got us here. You see, as a student of the history and of some of the greatest communities in history, I know that the foundation of every successful community, of every progressive community, is a, is a dependency, respect, and most importantly, a full understanding of where that community came from. In other words, if we take the time to understand what our community was aspiring to be when we elected Joe Hextall, and to understand the difficult struggle that ensued the day after he took his oath of office, a struggle that oftentimes required the participation of all of us. I just believe it might help those in leadership today to stay married to that original purpose of progress that we started with. It was a desire for progress with all its different iterations that inspired us to fight so hard for the opportunity to serve. And if we understand the struggle, it would be much harder to lose sight of the purpose we started with. For example, I think it should be instructive to know that Gloria Jenkins, Joe's opponent in that first election, although defeated, continued to represent her community with Joe, as if she had won the election herself. The thought never crossed our minds back then about trying to crush each other. We weren't filing ethic charges or criminal complaints against each other. There was too much at stake for our community back then. There is too much at stake now. And a short glance back at where we came from tells us this very clearly. This brings to us the mayor, this dynamic, vibrant, energetic, effervescent, purposeful woman I have the distinct pleasure of introducing today, Dina Holiday Ingram. I've had the pleasure of meeting, speaking to, and knowing many elected officials and people who wanted to be elected officials in my public life and since I retired. Feeling like I have a pretty good sense of knowing what is required to be a successful public servant. In, ver in every conversation with those individuals, the analysis for me is always the same. First, I try to determine whether it is an I or a we conversation. In this, I mean, I always find it suspicious when someone seeking office starts by explaining their qualifications before demonstrating an interest or understanding of the issues we face that make his or her qualifications re relevant in the first place. Second, what does this person seeking office care about and have they demonstrated a commitment to that issue that they care about before deciding to seek a leadership position? It's like when someone says they care about education but can't name the schools in their community. You have to question their purpose. Finally, I always ask whether this person possesses a humility and introspection to see backwards and forwards, and to stay wed to the purpose of we. In short, does this person, no matter how well intended, have the will to regularly look back to see if anyone is following? If there is no one there, you need to rethink your approach. A simple question, but a lot of people call themselves leaders and never look back to see if anyone is actually following. It probably goes without saying, but Dina Holiday Ingram passed my test with following flying colors. Born to lead, her journey began in Stark, Florida. The daughter of a father who was an entrepreneur who owned and operated a construction company and a mother who served for 35 years as a teacher and guidance counselor in the public school system. There, where the importance and the value of education was instilled in her and guided her through public school system, 
where she was encouraged to think outside the box. She graduated as a valedictorian of her Bradford High School class in 1992. From there, she attended Florida A&M University, FAMU, where she graduated magna cum laude with a Bachelor of Science degree in Accounting and Business Administration, with a double minor in Criminal Justice and Psychology. Not to outdo herself, she went on to attend Howard University School of Law, graduating with a Juris Doctorate. She then went on to Nova Southeastern University, earning a Master of Science degree in criminal justice with a specialty in child protection and juvenile justice, simultaneously earning several certifications in finance and economics. When Dina approached me about her idea to further her, her interest in improving the lives and quality of services for all East Point residents, she spoke specifically about her passion for providing opportunities for the economically disadvantaged and for collaborating to extend learning to improve educational outcomes for children. She talked about her appointment to the National League of Cities Youth Education and Families Council in 2014, where she was asked to serve on the President's Economic Mobility and Opportunity Task Force. She shared that she is also a member of NLC's National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials, Women in Municipal Government, and serves on the NLC's Community and Economic Development Policy Committee. At the local level, she serves on the Georgia Municipal Association Community Development and Public Safety Policy Committees, where she was a 2016-17 president of Georgia Municipal Black Caucus and serves on the Tropolis Atlanta Education Collective. She has worked in K-12 and higher education as a teacher and administrator, as an attorney, representing and advocating for seniors and others. Dina Holiday Ingram is prepared, focused, thoughtful, and purpose-driven. And finally, you know, a lot of people asked me during the campaign, they worried about my 80-year-old knees and whether I thought it was a good idea to be doing all that walking with Dina door to door and in the summer and in the heat. I said, maybe if I was just walking for me, it would not be smart. But I was walking for the hope that all of us saw almost three decades ago. I was walking for Fleetwood Price, for Barbara Collins. I was walking for Ann Douglas and Tony Widener and Joe Johnson and Lily Collins. I was walking for Cliff McDaniel, Gus Thornhill, Jane and Three Brown, for Gloria Jenkins. And I, really, from all of you in the audience, but I want to mention Francine Sims, Jim Jackson, Adrian Camp, Mary Reed, Sean Adkins, Mara McCune, Greg Fan, Rome Harrison, and I could go on and on, probably most people in the audience. And also, I was walking for my children and their children, because they say you have to model the behavior you want to inspire. All this said, I'd be less than honest with you today if I told you that we believed then that the work we were putting in for East Point might be generational. We weren't thinking that far ahead. We were just fighting every day for the next victory. So the fact that someone of Dina's statute and accomplishment would even be called to serve this city the fact is that she was elected with such a decisive mandate, I know for a lot of us means that fight was worth the prize. I now present to you Dina Holiday Ingram, the 34th mayor of the city of East Point, Georgia, international city, community of the future. Let the growth continue. <laughs> Good evening. It is truly an honor to be before you tonight and stand here as the 34th mayor of this great, great city, East Point, which I affectionately call the Point. 
I'm so delighted that each and every one of you took time out of your schedules to join us tonight for this State of the City Address. As you can see, the first 100 days of my administration have been really busy, but I'm enjoying every single moment of being your mayor. I would like to take a moment to recognize a few special people who are here tonight with me, um, who've been with me every step of the way. My husband, um, Willie Ingram Jr., my daughter, Nia Ingram, and my mother, Teresa Holliday, are here with me tonight, and I really appreciate them. If they could please stand to be recognized. To my colleagues who serve with me diligently on the East Point City Council, thank you so much for being here tonight. It is truly an honor to serve with each of you, and I've had the honor to serve with you for multiple years now. So we have Councilmember Sharon Shropshire, who's our Mayor Pro Tem. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Councilmember Stephanie Gordon, who's our Provisional Mayor Pro Tem. We have Councilmember Nanette Saucier. Ward C at large, I should be saying that, right? Council Member Myron Cook, Ward C. Council Member Thomas Calloway, Ward B. And we have Council Member Alexander Gothard in the back, Ward A. And our newest member of our team, Council Member Joshua Butler, Ward D at large. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. I also would like to take time to un recognize um, fellow council colleagues from other cities as well as elected officials. I see our state representative, Representative William Bodie, here with us on this evening. And if there are any other elected officials, if you could stand at this time to be recognized. I was going to get to you a little bit further down, but of course, the illustrious former representative and first council member to blaze a trail for us in the city of East Point, Representative Joe Hextall. <laughs> to the minute, oh, I'm so sorry. And in the back, my eyes are not reaching back there. Our current representative, exactly, who are yours, Representative Kim Schofield, District 60, is with us on this evening as well. Thank you so much. So to um, the ministers and pastors who are here with us on this evening and to those very special um, persons who've been praying for me along the way, Bishop Fan, Pastors Ashford, Brown, Calloway, Dixon, Garmin, Jakes, McCall, and Turnipseed, um, thank you so much for being here tonight and for your constant prayers. Mayor Mario Avery, former Mayor Mario Avery and colleague, please stand Thank to be recognized. Thank you so much to former Mayor of the City of Fairburn. Did I miss anyone? Now I ask for you guys to stand up. Don't be shy. You know elected officials aren't shy. Okay. So to um, another dear um, supporter who blazed the trails for us and um, supported me and supports me along the way, former councilwoman Ann Douglas, um, if we could recognize her. And my dear, dear colleague, Lydia Glaze, um, who has supported me, um, and she wasn't able to make it tonight, but was de is definitely here in spirit. I just want to publicly say thank you to her. And then to my A-team. So this has been a labor of love getting here today. Um, so we have Shannon Brooks with a C, who's my executive assistant. Um, Shannon Wiggins with the S, it's really two different people, but C and S, um, who's our awesome public information officer. And Jamaica Cole, who's also in our communications department. And Ms. Diane White, our city clerk. Thank you so very much for helping to make this night a success. To our partners who are here, um, Anointed Ones Catering, Flower Cottage on Main, and also Icon Filmworks, who's doing the recording. Thank you so much, too, for your efforts to this success. To all of the program participants, and let me first especially acknowledge former Mayor Patsy Joe Hilliard. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, and I greatly, greatly appreciate your support. 
You led gracefully through the tough times, and your humility, approachability, impact, and visionary leadership, and genuine care and concern for people truly inspire me, and that's what I admire about you. Thank you so much. To my daughter, Nia, who told me tonight that my first line should be this. Hello, I'm Dina Holiday Ingram, and I'm happy to be your mayor. How was that? Did I do a good job? Okay, thank you. I, next, oh my goodness. So to Nia and Asa, thank you so much for being awesome leaders today and making sure we got the Pledge of Allegiance right. Great job, ladies. To Simone Allen and Brianna Wilson, and I believe Raina People was the other young lady who joined them. Um, amazing voices. I truly enjoyed the national anthem. And to our Boy Scout troop, troop number 54, who, is, who are defying the odds, thank you so much for service at such an early age. The discipline and lessons that you're learning through the Scouts program will guide you throughout your life. To every city employee who's here, if you could stand or raise your hand to be acknowledged, yes, thank you. So I've enjoyed meeting you, and as members of Team East Point, remember, teamwork makes the dream works. And so um, the firefighters in the room, I have to share this um, special story that I've had on my first 100 days. So I, I stopped by fire station number three for a visit, and I um, was invited to play spades. And as if many, if many of you know, if you went to an HBCU, that's kind of like ABCs, right? And so um, I, for the first time in my spades career, ran a Boston, which means our opponents, me and my partner got all the books, my opponents got none. And so I look very full, I'm very much looking forward to re repeating this at every fire station in the city. <laughs> But on a serious note, we um, as council members and elected officials, we set policy, but we do not do the work. And to every city employee, thank you for showing up daily and working hard to serve our residents. Thank you for being here today. So now, on behalf of the East Point City Council and the city staff, I am pleased to share with you that the state of our city is strong and getting stronger every day. Our employment rate is down to 6.4%. We are increasing the number of police officers and for the first time, we have received an AA3 bond rating, which is huge. So we started at A1, but we have now moved to A3, AA3. And why is this? This is because this council, city staff, and you are committed to working together to continue progress in our great city. We are truly stronger together and moving forward. East Point is truly becoming a city of choice. We were re recently named as one of the top five neighborhoods for newcomers by owners.com. Why, you may ask again? Because we have a more stable government, we are, a multi, uh, we are a multicultural city, and we are investing in ourselves and improving our infrastructure and services. The stability of our government has led to an upgrade in our bond rating to AA3. The rating was issued by Moody's Investor Service, a wholly owned credit reporting agency, excuse me, credit rating agency, that recently upgraded the city from A1 to A A3. Our sizable tax base, which benefits from the proximity to Atlanta, our strong reserves and liquidity levels, elevated fixed costs, low debt burden, and prudent fiscal management were key factors to our upgrade. The city's financial policy strongly ensure that the finance department properly manages the city's budget. And in their and in their press release, Moody's Investors Services stated that their expectation is, guess what? That the city's overall credit profile will remain stable. And so you know what that means. We are continuing and we are poised and progressing to AAA high quality bond status.
our upgraded bond rating will allow us to receive lower interest rates, thus saving money that can be used for services and to provide services to you. A very special thank you to our finance director, Ms. Lolita Grant. I believe I saw her. Yes, right there waving her hands. Our city manager and the team of staff who paid, whose tireless efforts paid off. Let's give them a hand. Our tax digest and overall property values increased in fiscal year 2018 and are expected to rise again this fiscal year. And because of our financial stability and fiscal responsibility, we are in our third year of operating without a tax anticipation note. We continue to have a balanced budget without barring against the future collection of property taxes. We have not and will not balance our budget by borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. And that, my friend, is a great thing. It is a new season in East Point, and people are, and businesses are choosing East Point every day. We are continue to ex continuing to experience positive growth in our population and ensuring that everyone feels welcome, connected, and included is imperative. Understanding this, in February of this year, Council blazed the trail by being the first city in South Fulton County to adopt a resolution recognizing East Point as a welcoming city. Through the Atlanta Region Commission, One Region Initiative, Run Region Initiative. Our diversity is truly our strength and thus we must leverage and maximize our differences for the greater good of East Point. We are multicultural, a multicultural city with racial, socioeconomic, ethnic, sexual orientation, and spiritual diversity. The inclusion of an interfaith prayer on this evening is an expression of our openness and willingness and intentionality in embracing and celebrating all the multicultural assets in our great community. Thank you to Pastor Anthony Dixon and Pastor Callaway, who will give our closing, and to Aman Mohammed Samir Wahid for joining me to this evening. East Point sits at the door of the world's busiest airport, and our connection to the airport gives us access to people from all across the world. As we continue to experience growth in residents and businesses, it is critical that we are laser focused on creating and sustaining an inclusive community. We must continue to harness the strength and celebrate the rich cultures in our cities. So at first glance, our demographics are this, 76% African American, 16% white, and 11% Hispanic. And that might cause some to think that as a majority minority city, inclusion is not an issue for us. But our reality is a little different. Inclusion does not just happen from passive efforts. A community that leverages and maximizes its diversity to a palpably inclusive community requires intentionality and focused and connected efforts. And as your mayor of East Point, creating a community that feels authentically inclusive is a priority for me. Our Hispanic population has increased from single, double, single digits to double digit percentages, from 8% to 11%, and it's increasing daily. We have around 27% of our households experiencing poverty. And additionally, while data on the LGBTQ population is not really available due to lack of tracking on the federal, state, and local level, and at the county, we have a substantial LGBTQ population in our community. I'm keenly aware that challenges around inclusion are not unique to East Point, so I will launch the United Point to tackle the challenge of authentically re reaching out to all residents, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, class, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability or disadvantage, or socioeconomic status, and give all residents full access to resources while promoting equal treatment through street through neighborhood exchanges and street and neighborhood ambassadors, through mobile mayor and other initiatives, there will be authentic opportunities for members of different communities and groups to identify and share their similarities and differences, to build relationships with people from different cultures, and to help residents learn how to be an ally to people from different groups and backgrounds. I'm optimistic that an atmosphere of authentic inclusion will envelop East Point 
and we will get to a place where every resident will refer to East Point as my city and truly feel a part of the fabric of our community. The more we focus on values, not divisive issues, the more we realize that we are more alike than we are different, our common values will lead us to common issues, and working together, we will be the united point. There is no I, me, or my. There is we, us, and our. As I mentioned earlier, the day-to-day -day operations are performed by invaluable employees, and we are committed to investing in our employees. This commitment is demonstrated by investing our investment in livable wages for our employees and our revised tuition reimbursement program. We began our journey at $13.50 an hour on our way to $15 an hour. And with the increase in this fiscal year, 19, we will be closer to reaching our goal. Our tuition reimbursement program has been revised to attract and retain qualified persons and employment for the city broaden the knowledge of employees in their fields, and provide an avenue for career advancement in our city. In addition to being committed to our employees, we are truly committed to safety. Your safety is, and always will be, our top priority. Thus, we continue to prioritize safety in our budget. The valiant efforts of our police department have led to the arrest of members of a criminal group that were responsible for numerous crimes in the metro area. And in January, February, and March of this year, we experienced a decrease in the total, total number of UCR Part one, 1 offenses or violent offenses from month to month. Nevertheless, like other cities across this nation, recruiting and retaining officers is a challenge. And we too are facing that challenge. In response, last fiscal year, council allocated a half a million dollars for an educational plan and an implementation certification pay incentives for our public safety employees. And as a result, from January 1st to April of this year, compared to last year, that same time period, we have increased our, employee, our hiring of police officers by 450% by hiring 11 new officers. And additionally, we'll have two new officers starting in May. We currently have a total of 95 sworn officers serving and protecting our city. The increase in our police officers will bolster our community policing efforts, provide more efforts to patrol our city, and aid in crime prevention. Increasing the size of our police department requires ensuring that we continue to provide quality equipment for our officers. So we have pur purchased two-way handheld radios for every officer in the department, new hardline in-car radios and laptops, and we are in the process of purchasing body-worn cameras and in-car cameras for our officers. Our chief of police, Tommy Gardner, Gardner is committed to ensuring excellent service, and in January 2018, our police department became a state-certified police department, and we're working on national certification as we speak. <laughs> Likewise, our fire department, under the leadership of Chief Ware, is committed to our safety and has maintained the highest insurance service office rating of one, which will often lead to to lower insurance rates for homeowners and businesses. Our firefighters respond to medical emergencies, fire-related, and even non-emergencies, I learned. The men and women in our fire department assist wherever there is a need and often attend neighborhood meetings to share health and safety tips. We are excited that on March 16, 2018, we had the groundbreaking for Rosemary Chief Rosemary Roberts Cloud Fire Station and Safety and Training Facility, also known as Fire Station Number 4. The fire station honors Chief Rosemary Cloud, who made history on April the 2nd of 2002 as not only the first black female chief in, fire chief in the city of East Point, but also in the United States of America. So those who came before us had the foresight to make that awesome selection. The 12,000 square feet facility will consist of four engine bays, a manufactured burn facility, and will also serve as a training location for firefighters not only in the city of East Point, but across this county, state, and nation. 
Construction is expected to be finished in winter 2019, so soon come will be our newly restored fire station number four. Our first responders show up daily to protect and preserve our safety. And I am immensely grateful for their bravery, community engagement, and service. Clean City. According to the criminological broken windows theory, one unrepaired broken window is a signal that no one cares. And so breaking more windows costs nothing. This line of thought inevitably exacerbates blight. We are committed to having a clean and vibrant city. Our zeal for transforming areas from blight to bright is demonstrated by allocation of a half a million dollars to the 50 Worst Pro Properties Program, the largest allocation of resources to date. Although the legal process can sometimes be a little daunting, we have increased the number of properties that have been demolished and maintained. We demolished 11 properties and performed maintenance on the rest. Additionally, the city manager is bringing together a cross-department team that includes staff from code enforcement, solid waste, parks and recreation, economic development, and public works to collectively blitz each ward with coordinated cleaning efforts. It is truly imperative that we are strategically implementing a comprehensive and multifaceted plan to eradicate blight in our great city. The Blighted Property and Community Improvement Task Force met this month, and the council members and citizens who serve on that task force are excited about the community opportunity to provide research recommendations and best practices regarding the potential implementation of and creating solutions surrounding issues of blight and abandoned and vacant properties in our city. Keep East Point beautiful. Under the leadership of Ms. Frances Kennedy has been very, very busy cleaning and providing opportunities throughout our city to clean. From goats grazing at Connolly Nature Park, to removal of invasive plants along the creek in Sumner Park, to citywide cleanups, to tire removal, paper shredding, and a water festival for our children, Ms. Frances Kennedy and volunteers are working hard to keep East Point beautiful. If you are interested in learning more about Keep East Point Beautiful and how you can become more involved in clean beautification and environmental efforts in our city, please join Ms. Kennedy on May 6th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Tea in the Rose Garden. In addition to diligent efforts to keeping East Point clean and beautiful, we are enhancing the quality of life services for you. We received a total of $5,254,160 from the Transportation Special Local Option Sales Tax, also known as T-SPLAS, and we have put it to work installing sidewalks, repaving streets, and we've begun the construction of the East Point Model Mile, as you saw in the video. Through T-SPAS and our local imp maintenance improvement grant funds, we have installed 18,421 linear feet that's 3.5 miles of sidewalk. And we've also repaved 32,049 linear feet, 6.1 miles of roadways. Because of your approval of T-SPOS and the LMIG funds we received, we were able to complete these projects and will complete other transportation projects without using property tax dollars. We are also improving our parks and expanding our recreation programs. Through partnering with the Metro Atlanta chapter of the Southern Off-Road Bike Association, SOBRA, we are installing the Ride and Fly Mountain Bike Trail at Sykes Park. We installed a new playground at John D. Milner Sports Complex, and we installed a new playground equipment at River Park and Col Colonial Hills Unity Park. We also are installing a dog park at Sumner Park with a projected timeline date of July of this year. We're installing a new pavilion and renovating the steps at River Park, installing a walking trail and outdoor classroom stations at Conley Nature Park, installing a small multi-purpose field and small facility repair walk, excuse me, small facility and repairing walkway lights at John D. Milner Sports Complex. We're also extending the parking lot and renovating the Grayson Field and pedestrian bridge at Sumner Park. Renovating the walkway and the bridge at Colonial Hills Unity Park and installing bike pump tracks and a small facility at Sykes Park. 
Our recreational program hosted our first ever youth baseball league, the East Point Baseball Connection, and hosted our first annual senior card tournament with over 80 participants. I think they were playing bid whiz. It wasn't spades, so I didn't know. In celebration of Older American Month, which is in May, we are partnering with Gen Care, Fulton County, Friends of Bowden, and AARP to host our second annual Golden Age Resource Fair on Thursday, May 17th at the Bowden Center. We had a 20% increase in our youth basketball participation with a total of 69 teams of young people. And we're proud to boast that our youth are champions at the local, district, state, and national level. From three youth basketball league champions to our two youth basketball district champions to our three youth basketball state runner-ups, our youth girls fast pitch softball state champions, our youth football 12 and under league state champions to our youth AAU basketball Myrtle Shot big youths 15 and under national champions. Our youth are truly at the top of their game athletically, and we are committed to empowering them to be scholar athletes. So to that end, we hosted our first annual East Point Youth Spelling Bee to highlight and connect sports and academics, and it was a resounding success. We also hosted our first annual East Bees, as you saw, awards banquet for our youth and in our recreation program, and they had the red carpet, they had a step and repeat, and these two amazing little youngsters named Cam and Avery really rocked the house. <laughs> With the increase in programming and innovative events and the growth in program participants, which is around 2,900 youth and 100 seniors, we are in the concept design phase for a new recreation center. So stay tuned, a new recreation is coming soon. Not only are our parks and recreation offerings expanding, our arts and entertainment activities within the city are growing too. In addition to the world-renowned Val Ethnic Dance Company, we also have Seven Art Center, which offers arts and music classes, Tila Studios, a visual arts incubator for female artists, and the Windmill Art Center, a premier multi-use arts rental facility, and the list continues to grow. And bringing us together to enjoy the art of music, on May 23rd, the city will begin hosting our Wednesday wind down on the fourth Wednesday of each month, and Councilmember Shropshire is coordinating that effort. It will go from May through August. So come join us and have fun, and if there's music, you must dance, because I'm the dancing mayor, and I don't like to dance alone. When it comes to quality of life, our health is our truly our wealth. To increase the healthy lifestyle choices and create a more active and connected community, we launched the Healthy Point, a 90-day health initiative. I'd like to take this time to thank our sponsors, Wellstar, Kaiser, Newell Recycling, and the Aerotropolis CIDs, as well as our partners at Chick-fil-A on Cleveland Avenue and Truly Living Well. The Healthy Point provides an opportunity to work out up to three times a week with Marion Council and offers incentives also for participation. Join us this Saturday as our, um, excuse me, our East Point Fire Department will be hosting their annual health expo here at the city annex. We're bustling with social activities, but we're also bustling with economic development. Currently, there are more than 1,400 small, median, and large businesses within our city. And 1,100 plus of those businesses, around 84%, are small businesses consisting of one to nine employees. Currently, there will be approximately 365 new jobs created this year, including jobs at Creekside Distribution Center, Four Points by Sheraton Hotel coming in Camp Creek, the Malaloo Point downtown, ATL Pop Stars, Jake's Ice Cream, Arden's Gardens, Arts Exchange, and a number of other small businesses going through the small business incentive process. Since the inception of the Small Business Incentive Program, the department, Economic Development Department has met with more than 25 businesses and approved five businesses and is working to more than double that number this year. The approximate value of Small Business Incentives issued thus far is around $70,000 to date. 
and we will spotlight and celebrate the impact of small businesses during National Small Business Week. So please join us on Wednesday, May 2nd at the Georgia International Convention Center for a day of learning and networking for small businesses in the Tri-Cities area, thanks to the efforts of Councilmember Callaway, along with our fellow colleagues in Hapeville and Tri-Cities. While our employment rate continues to decline, and is currently around 6.4%. As I mentioned earlier, our poverty rate is around 27%. And our median household income in this city is around $37,000, which suggests that, that, must, that we must work and be intentional about ensuring that there are workforce development opportunities to help all of our residents build skills to be ready to take advantage of the opportunities that come to our great city. So it is critical for us to ensure that development goes beyond brick and mortars and provides community benefits where possible. Local contracting and hiring preferences, along with exploration of a socioeconomically disadvantaged business program, remains priorities for this administration. At this time, the, again, I said the development is bustling. We have about 21 projects in the pipeline that we are expecting to close later this year. And the total value of construction at East Point since just since January of this year has been around $28,491,226. Our continued growth hinges on our continued ability to get to yes and streamline our processes. And to that end, as you saw earlier, the Planning and Community Development Department is improving the permitting and inspection processes and has begun developing our online permit software. They've added another certificate of occupancy day, and the firing inspector is now a part of the department staff to create a one-stop shop for permitting and inspection. We've also improved the method of planned storage and maintenance in the warehouse facility. While we are elated that East Point is becoming a city of choice for development, we must be proactive in our planning and zoning ordinances to ensure a solid foundation for implementation of our updated comprehensive plan and for smart growth in our city. Great things are happening in the point, and a lot of it is around filming. Georgia is now number one in the world, representing $9.5 billion worth of economic impact to the state, and we are having a positive impact in our city as well. From community pride to new film industry businesses like Central Atlanta Props and Commander LLC, choosing East Point, to our existing businesses experiencing growth to increase in rental of East Point homes and other establishments for filming, including city property rentals, which generates revenue for us. Our filmography contains a number of very familiar titles that you might see. And last year, we issued a total of 45 permits. And this year already, just in the first quarter, we've already issued 22 permits. So filming is definitely on the rise. We are projecting that we will far exceed our permitting for last year as well as the revenue generated from that. Our Economic Development Department is presenting Filming 101 sessions because of this boom for persons interested in the filming industry to network and learn about how to get more involved in providing services to the industry. Additionally, the Economic Development Department continues to host Listen and Learn sessions for small businesses. In addition to the small business incentives, we have reactivated other economic development tools to maximize these tools in our city. The members of our downtown development, um, reinstated downtown development authority, are getting ready to undergo training so that we can use that tool in economic development. Our business and industrial development authority has been hard at work and issued its first $5.2 million bond for the expansion of Arden's Gardens. And while this is a first for BIDA, the members of BIDA are ready, willing, and able to provide financing to create and or expand economic development opportunities throughout our city. As you know, education is a critical component of economic development. We continue to partner with our local school leaders, nonprofits, for-profits, businesses, faith community, service providers, as well as other community organizations to extend learning for our children and increase parent and youth engagement through workforce development opportunities through our joint learning committee. 
In a recent meeting with the Fulton County School Superintendent at our Joint Learning Committee meeting, Dr. Jeff Rose, he shared that the district's goal is to prepare all students to graduate ready to pursue and succeed on their chosen paths by focusing on four things, student achievement, people and culture, community collaboration, and fiscal responsibility. He further shared that the district is committed and working to have no school with a score below 60 within the next school year, excuse me, next three years. We currently have eight schools in the city of East Point. We have five elementary schools, two middle schools, and one high school. Six out of our eight schools had increase in their performance scores last school year. And in fact, and in fact, three of our, of our um, schools experienced double digit gains in their performance scores last year. We must continue to collaborate to help ensure that every child in the city of East Point is able to be successful. We're working with the Fort McPherson Redevelopment Authority. We have two community, two, um, two East Point residents on that board, and I saw Sandra Johnson in the room who serves on that board for us. We also are working with the Aerotropolis Atlanta Alliance, um, who's leveraging a lot of different resources and providing support in workforce development, education development, as well as other collaborated efforts. And also our Aerotropolis CIDs are helping to beautify the area over in the Camp Creek area, as well as the Divergent Diamond Project, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So as we continue to grow, our infrastructure for electric, water, storm water, and sewer is critical. In addition to upgrading all electric substations and new regulators, installing LED street lights throughout the city, we are also implementing SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition. And that is an automated control system that is used in industries such as water and power. The system has a centralized system that monitors and controls entire sites, the entire substation. And as of right now, we depend on notifications from residents to warn us as to when there an outage has occurred. With the implementation of SCADA, we will now know beforehand. Before we get the call, we'll know where the outages are, and we will begin implementing SCADA in June 2018. The project will take between four to five months to be fully implemented, and meanwhile, we're continuing to implement the automated metering infrastructure system for our electric and water meters, also known as AMI. AMI will provide us the ability to have more accurate billing, improved operational facility, excuse me, efficiencies, improved system reliability and security, and knowledge again of when outages happen and the exact location of those outages. We'll have the ability to disconnect and reconnect remotely, so we won't have to come out to do those things. We'll be able to do them remotely through the system. And we'll know, be able to answer questions about customers' bills as they come up in real time and provide their usage real time. We will also be able to identify leaks in our water system, and we will also be able to, this will provide us with critical information about pipe conditions. Small leaks are much less expensive to repair. However, unidentified leaks can turn into water main breaks, which we've experienced um, in the early part of this year, which are much more expensive to fix. And in speaking of repairs in our water system, we have repaired over 450 linear feet of our sanitary sewer main lines. Beginning this summer, as you traverse the Camp Creek Parkway, you will notice the beginning of the diverging diamond interchange by the Georgia Department of Transportation. In collaboration with the Aerotropolis Atlanta CID, this project will significantly reduce traffic congestion in Camp Creek and will also provide art, landscaping, and beautifications. We are continuing to improve and enhance our communication platforms and tools, and we notice that residents are using our c -Clicks Fix Act, which is also known as Access East Point, a lot more. And through that, our response times have been impeccable. We've responded to over 90% of those complaints, and all of them have been responded to within a little over 16 days. And you notice the Public Works Department is repairing potholes within 48 hours of reporting. 
our information technology department has made several um, substantial upgrades to our technology to improve our efficiency. And with the cybersecurity incidents that are happening all around this country, um, our department has taken a number of proactive steps to safeguard against cybersecurity threats. Over the last year, the city has partnered with Georgia State University, Computer Information System Department, and utilized graduating seniors to review the city's security posture. We've reviewed the city's existing policies, procedures, and systems, and developed a comprehensive strategy to meet the challenges posed by emerging cybersecurity threats. We have de developed a three-pronged strategy focusing on people, processes, and technology, which includes fencing the people, fencing the network with processes and improvements, fencing network and systems with technology, fencing through collaboration, and risk mitigation. As we move forward, the proposed FY19 budget includes funding for our new city hall in downtown East Point. This catalytic project will have three phases. The first phase will be the construction of a 32,130 square foot city hall building. This building will include city offices, a multi-purpose city, um, excuse me, a multi-purpose center for city council chambers, and an additional 2,424 square feet of shell space for growth expansion of new offices within the building. The multi-purpose city council chambers will be utilized to host numerous community events and activities. And the city hall building is also being designed to be a sustainable development, which will provide a mo model of energy efficiency for future construction projects within our city. Phase two, the second phase of the project will be the renovation of the one-story city auditorium. Once completed, a bridge will connect the two buildings together, which will allow events to be coordinated between the two buildings. The city auditorium will be available for a utilization of our businesses and residents for activities ranging from conferences to weddings. The renovation project is expected and estimated to be completed in late fall of 2019. So that's this year, y'all. But I say definitely by next year this time. We'll be in a new building. <laughs> The City Hall project is now in the construction phase with an estimated completion date of winter 2018 and the contractor working on the project is the Winter Johnson Group, which is a joint venture between the minority-owned firm AL Johnson Construction Company and Winter Construction. Across the street from City Hall development, we will redevelop the area commonly known as the Commons. The development will likely be a medium to high density project with retail and residential space. And as we continue to strive for maximum efficiency in our government operations, we will continue to be fiscally responsible. And you and I know this. Soon the world will know what we as residents know, that East Point is a great city with amazing residents and a great community. And people from all around will join us in excitement and spread the word and say to others, let's get to the point. God bless you, and may God bless our city, East Point. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Wow, what an amazing information. A lot of things I know about, some I didn't know about, but thank you, Mayor Holiday Ingram, for your wonderful words. Now we will have the benediction by Pastor Earl Calloway, St. Stephen Missionary Baptist Church. And afterwards, there is a um, refreshments for you to partake and to socialize. Thank you and have a good evening. bow our heads. God of all, 
we pray for our city. After this prolonged period of campaigning with hopes that those elected to lead will allow you to order their steps with character and integrity, realizing that no matter the changing political landscape, you still have the whole world in your hands. We pray for the leadership and the fellowship. Touch the hearts of our leaders and protect those who dutifully serve in governmental offices. Empower them to stand, to serve, and to intercede for our community. Advocating justice, community development, unity, and peace. We beg you, great God, to give us leaders who will work with other leaders to erect bridges, not barriers, to govern with grace, compassion, and love for all people, regardless of age, gender, race, or religion. Great God, we have heard their words. Now let them hear yours. Father, this is my prayer for Mayor Dina Holiday Ingram and other government and community leaders throughout this great city of East Point. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done in and through us. We humbly pray this prayer and every heart said, Amen. God bless you.